Good morning. <laughs> Sunday. Hey, my dear. Anyways, this video is for that one viewer, my one striver, right, that asked me about Jimmy Jacks. Well, just exactly what is a Jimmy Jack? Well, a Jimmy Jack is, and the vast, and here I'm going to say this right in the front, right off the top, the vast majority of them are people of my generation. It's our fault. We did it. Right. We let the government, we let the government convince us. Right. A Jimmy Jack is that person that lives with the consume at any cost mentality. Well, Americans. <laughs> Mostly. There are some Europeans with this mindset. I'm saying the Russians have this mindset, but the Russians are, are more devious with it. Anyways. Right. Jimmy Jack. All right. Uh. They are people that consume, 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 consume. Gotta have everything. Gotta have a brand new phone, right? You're saying gotta have iPhone, right? Gotta have laptop, gotta have, you know, digital sound, everybody, right? Uh, fiber optic, you know, 300 megabit per second internet, right? Gigantic, you know, 80 inch curved 4K screen. Uh, they don't care, right? The newest Nikes, right? Reeboks, you know what I'm saying? Adidas, Fila's, Gildan, Boxer Shorts. We're all, we all, see, we, we all are Jimmy Jack. Well, hell, I'm wearing Gildan Boxer Shorts. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's because of the way... This all started back in the 50s. Uh, with the marketing. Right, their marketing science is you know, it was just barely in the infancy. It was right after World War II. There were all these returning veteran soldiers, hardened people, you know, what I'm saying that, that that fought the war for freedom. They did. World War II was about freedom, right, and, and about your right to choose and about your right to live any which way you wanted and believe what you wanted to do and, and who, you know, what I'm saying, right. So, there were all of these people, all these veterans, and plus, there were all of you know, Rosie the Riveters, you know what I'm saying, that were single, that were beautiful, that were young, you know what I'm saying, that had piles of money that they'd saved up from working for the government in the factories, you know what I'm saying, they all got together, America was still wide open back then, you know, it was still, you know, there was very, you know, there was still millions of people that lived back here in the West, but it wasn't as populated now, then as it is now, and people started moving, they started buying, they started getting campers, they started getting trailers, they started, you know, all the, this whole gigantic industry opened up. Right, and they started making things and building things, washing machines and dryers, you know what I'm saying, electric stuff, you know, coffee pots, cup pots, you know what I'm saying, everything, anything, you know, <laughs> coffee cups were being made of high caliber ceramic, because remember, the whole entire world was one gigantic industrial complex, and they switched from making bombs and bullets and airplanes and tanks to washers and dryers and TVs, the 50s TVs, I remember growing up, I was born in 58. It's kind of funny. I remember when I was little, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, right, where we lived in Winslow. We were one of the five families that actually had a television. A Philco. Ours was a Philco. You know, the big white square box with the little tiny old thing, black and white. Uh, we used to watch Uncle Milk's show. We used to watch all Conquerors' shit. You know what I'm saying? But slowly, over time, right, the corporations, corporate, the corporate thinkers, not uh, the think tanks and all those people that you know were studying social science. Uh, um, they started experimenting with these marketing techniques that, these, that some of these experts were coming up with uh, and, and the magazines. Because remember, it was print media, it was king still. Television was in sympathy, you know what I'm saying? And, and on top of it, television was live, so the commercials that they did, they had to be spot on, they had to have that subliminal, you know, message, uh, uh, you know. They started experimenting, they started doing this, they started doing that, you know, pictures, they started experimenting with images, you know what I'm saying, putting some liminal stuff in, all that stuff. And people of my generation who wanted more, who wanted all this, who wanted this great life, remember the American dream, huh? You know what I'm saying, they wanted all this stuff, so bought into it. Huh? And started consuming and consuming and consuming. And America, because America was a superpower, right? And the Russians were a superpower. Right, the Chinese were kind of superpower. They just had they had the manpower. They didn't have the superpower. Right, and so, uh, 
and thus, you know, all the little countries that were obliterated everywhere all over the world that we were rebuilding, you know what I'm saying, in our image, right, we started producing, producing, producing everything, anything, millions, by the millions, like, like the Chinese do now. Well, uh, my generation, right, started, you know, expanding, and the economy started expanding, and everything started expanding, and things started growing. Corporate America said, hey, we got, we got something here. Right? So, they started pumping more and more money into marketing. Right? All kinds of crazy shit. You know, nowadays, you young people call it social engineering. <laughs> Back then, we call it manipulating. Manipulation, that's what we call it. <laughs> people might know, you know. Any of those of us that know about this country. Right. But anyways, in the 70s, right, when the Vietnam War came, right, that kind of changed. The mindset kind of changed. Because now... Right, we had a whole generation of young people between the ages of 16. You know, remember, 1965, the Vietnam War started. I was seven years old. Right? By 1975, when the war ended, right, you know what I'm I was 17 years old. Now, now, the market strategy had to change because now the people of my age, the people between my age of 17 and, and the people of 30, Remember all the demonstrators and the hippies and the yippies and, and the, right, the fucking, you know, oh, Abby, Hoff, Abby Hoffman and all those, you know, the sun, weather underground, everybody. They changed. They were fighting the war here in America for freedom. The freedom, you know, the right to fucking be free. Right? We didn't care. You know, it wasn't about stopping the war. The war was useless. It was full of rubber trees. Right? And it was a waste of time, waste of energy, waste of money, waste of lives. And, saying, and, it, and it hardened the heart of the whole younger generation against the government. But yet, we were still consumers. So, right, the 70s changed everything. So the marketing strategies changed. And, and now, right, they were aiming more right, at the older people. Right? And so the people that were over 40, those people that grew up during the war and knew and remembered. Right? So the marketing strategy kind of, you know, change directions. That's where we came up with this term of demographics. It divides our society by our age group, our race, you know what I'm saying, our religious beliefs, our, you know, humanity, right, our species, you know, male, female, <laughs> right, and they started angling all these different angles. And Jimmy Jack, right, kept buying and buying and buying and consuming and consuming. Right? It took got to the point where now, and then we waste more than we consume. I throw the shit away, dump it on the ground, leave it you know, shit in the woods, we fuck have a road to up here with it. Right? And shit like that. And then something breaks. Right? Because now that you know, haven't you ever freaked haven't you guys freaked out yet that the shit isn't built to break? So they just have to buy a new one or pay to get it fixed. Right? Okay, that's pr that right there leads to right, mass production of, ma of cheap ass fucking Chinese and parts that are gonna break. But yet, Jimmy Jack's still buying shit. And, right, you know I'm saying, since, wait a minute, you know, hey, when I was fucking 16 and I got my driver's license, gasoline was 38 cents a gallon. All of a sudden, bango, you know what I'm saying, it's been up, 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 all the way up to $4 in some places, some places, $5. Right, and then back down, and then up, and then down. Then the Russians with their stupid Lucas Oil fucking pumping the fish. Right? People have, in my generation, have that mindset that gasoline is cheap. Gasoline is, is an unending source. We just pour the shit in our fucking car and go wherever we want. Nowadays, it's super F-350 diesels and Cummings and... Mercedes-Benz Springer vans getting, you know, nine miles to the gallon burning diesel fuel at 80 miles an hour pulling their fucking fifth wheels and driving their new motor buses pulling a Yukon at 80, 90 miles an hour right, leaving barrels and fucking bags of trash on the side of the highway where they camped last night right, not caring about you, me, them, or the, anything else around them except the journey, the adventure. Oh, we got money, let's go spend it, right? You know what I'm saying? Jimmy Jack. Now, corporate America has its Jimmy Jacks, too. <laughs> ranchers and stuff. Ranchers are like are the prime, you know, to me, ranchers and people that, that produce so that the government can force us to consume it right, are, the, are the main Jimmy Jacks. You know what I'm saying? People that own fucking 
gigantic chicken farms with millions of chickens, you know, stuffed in cages, you know, shitting out eggs, feeding them steroids, you know what I'm saying? They hatch out their eggs, they're this big, they weigh three, four ounces. Two weeks, they weigh 22 pounds because they've been forced to feed them steroids and the fuck rooster bush to feed. Jimmy Jack Monster, you know what I'm saying? McDonald's. Right, McDonald's for grinding out fucking Big Macs faster than fucking Chrysler can make cars, right? So you guys run down there and make cafe, slurpy, slushy, slushy, right? And say, hey, 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 but yet nobody noticed they're charging us a dollar eighty-seven or something more. You know what I'm saying? Right? For two fucking sausage patties with fucking cheese, you know, you know, two sausage and muffins with cheese. But right? they used to be fucking eighty-nine cents, and all of a sudden now they're like two bucks because McDonald's is having all-day breakfast. Jimmy Jack thought that one up. Uh-huh. I don't know. Even you young people. Let right, me see. See, now we have it. See, my generation has alienated all the other generations after us because it was us that did all this shit. It was, you know, look at them. The vast majority of the Jimmy Jacks driving the fucking motor bus. People that are my age or older. And young people are buying into this van life. You know what I'm saying? Motorbus life. Hey, shoot, trailer life. You know what I'm saying? Let's go, bro. We live in a van and we're a blogger. We're a blogger. Look at me, I'm a blogger. I live in a trailer. <laughs> right? And then they're driving everywhere, burning fuel like mad, you know what I'm saying? Wasting shit, throwing shit away. Dude, do you know how many. I, the, I put two barrels out there in the dry camping area so that people could throw away their trash before they leave. Cool. It's my job, right? 55 gallon steel drum barrels. I empty them out every other day because they're full of little tiny circle cape bags tied up with fucking trash. Man, that's a lot of fucking trash, Jimmy Jack. Where does it all go? It goes to the dump, to the landfill, and then bury it, right? And you guys are concerned that the radiation is going to get me. Thank you, I appreciate that. But you know what? The, the, the methane and the chemicals and all kind of shit, whatever the, is in the dump, is slowly seeping down into the water table. And I think that's more dangerous. Jimmy Jack thought that one up. Let's bury the shit in the ground. <laughs> So you asked me where the Jimmy Jack is. No? Yeah, I, I can be a Jimmy Jack at times. Yes, I can. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to fool you. Right? Here, let me give you a prime example. Uh, I got a crock pot, a coffee pot, a microwave, a coffee bean grinder, right? Uh, laptop. I got Moto G. iPhone. Samsung 3, Galaxy Tab, right? And I got every cord plugged, charging fucking device right, that goes with them. <laughs> right? I got a wireless mouse. Microsoft. I hate Microsoft. Thanks, Anonymous. Well, you name it. I got Green, li- green Plus Live fucking, you know, $60 fucking super skillet. And I didn't buy it. Scored it. Right? But but you see, the, you see the mindset. You see the mentality. You see how it works. No. Well, is it going to change? Not until the fucking fuel runs out. Not until all the dinosaurs are sucked up. <laughs> and, that's, and we're not too far away from that, I think. And so, remember that movie, though, what's his name? Uh, May Escape from New York, Kurt Russell. The snake split skin with the eye patch. Right? That. They've been burning coal oil in the fucking, the, what's his name, the bad guy, Isaac Hayes, right, you know what I'm saying? They drove around in his, his Cadillac Fleetwood broom, right, with the little lamps on the front, right, burning, and they had the brain, the mad scientist was making the fuel out of coal oil that they was crunching from the fucking, from all of the fuel bur- oil burners around the city that were left over, because remember, they walled this part of the city off and made it into the prison. Well, FEMA's got a prison up in Alaska that'll hold two million people. Jimmy Jack, to speak Brian. 
Tak 